Praise the Lord, everyone. Good morning to you. My apologies for coming to you about a minute late here. I was just uh, looking over my notes and over some last minute requests and time got away from me. I looked look down at my clock and realized that I'm running just a little bit behind this morning. But I welcome each and every one of you on this uh, Friday morning as we prepare to go to prayer today for so many needs that have been submitted overnight and some that we've been praying for for quite some time. And what a privilege it is. And, um, and I consider it a great responsibility as well to take your needs to the Lord in prayer. And as we entrust our needs uh, to one another, uh, there's a vulnerability there that we expose ourselves to others and our vulnerabilities to them and allowing them to pray for us. And uh, that's, um, uh, that's quite a thing. You know, it's, it's, um, it's just a fact that it's easier to have faith for someone else's need than for your own. And so we cherish the prayers of one another today because when one of us are weak in one area, the other uh, is there to assist and, and hold us up. So we thank God for each of you. Already 10 of you signing on with us this morning. Sister Pam, God bless you this morning. Good to see you and uh, Carmen and Star, uh, Mike Hodge, Marsha Moore, Mom and Dad, Judy and Mike. Uh, we're thankful for each and every one of you and those whose names I cannot see. I know you're there this morning and I appreciate uh, each and every one of you. I have a praise report this morning uh, concerning Dylan Parkey. Um, we prayed for him yesterday. He was having an eye surgery, an iris implantation, and this was not a cosmetic surgery. Uh, he was born without irises. His eyes could not focus, and, um, and he had to live with that, um, that uh, problem with his eyes for um, all of his childhood and adolescent years. And now as a young adult, they uh, were able to do this uh, surgery and so today he has two blue eyes and those eyes work uh, like our eyes are working for us this morning so we give God praise for that successful surgery and we do have several several requests that came in overnight and I want to give particular focus first of all this morning to um, family members that are in need of salvation and other needs of a spiritual nature that people have turned in. So we had many of those. Terry Mizell asking for prayer for his boys, Terry, Jean, and Michael. Uh, Sister Pam wants us to continue to pray for her children, Randy, Bobby, Jenny, and Joe. Uh, Marsha Moore wants us to continue to pray for her sons, Josh and Zach. Uh, Beulah is asking us to pray for her son, Frank, and for her granddaughter, Amber. Uh, Sarah Mercer uh, desires prayer for her sons. Uh, Carmen wants us to continue to pray for her and for her daughter, Grace. Tasha Ray uh, is wanting to see her sister and husband come back to God. Uh, Brenda Yandell, we want to continue to remember her family, uh, that God would continue to work uh, in all of her daughter's lives and her close family members' lives. Uh, Debbie Biddick has uh, been wanting us to pray for her daughters as well. And so we have several needs that are uh, of a spiritual nature this morning, some of them needing salvation, some needing deliverance from some things in their lives. And we want to take them to the throne of grace this morning and continue to believe God that there is a work that's going on behind the scenes today, things that we can't see, that we can't behold. But Job said on the left hand where he doth work, and yet I cannot behold him or I cannot see what he is doing. But we know that God is faithful. Job situations we need to pray about today. Elizabeth Riggins is asking us to pray for a miracle job for herself. Uh, Jonathan Tucker, um, last I heard he was still um, not able to go back to work so we want to pray that he can uh, go back to his job. Uh, Mark and Jenny Perkins ask that we pray for them as they make some important business decisions. Uh, Michaela Perkins is sending a request for herself and her husband, and they lost their baby a little over a month ago when she was almost 12 weeks along, 
and um, they need prayers for continued healing and for a healthy, successful pregnancy in the future. We're just going to agree together this morning in the name of Jesus, amen, that that need is going to be met. Uh, Mike Hodges' father-in-law, Roy Ross, has a health issue that we need to pray about. Uh, Carmen's sister is in serious pain with a possible illness relapse. And um, I'm assuming that this is uh, Tracy. Uh, she's having considerable pain in her arm. And so we want to pray for Tracy this morning. Uh, also, uh, Carmen submitted another request here this morning for uh a person named Terry who desperately needs a liver transplant and a hip replacement. He's a veteran, um, and the VA is not readily addressing uh, these severe health problems. We want to pray that this would all get straightened out, and we want to trust in God this morning to reach down and to touch him in a supernatural way. Evangelist Doug Kleindienst is asking for prayer for his wife, who is having a surgery today for stomach issues. Also with stomach issues, my aunt Evelyn Marshall, we want to continue praying for her. We want to keep praying for Adam Lane. Uh, I did not receive an update yesterday, but he had been airlifted to Missouri Baptist Hospital in St. Louis for possible surgery on his pancreas. Uh, he's been battling C. diff infection. He's been on dialysis and on a respirator and just in really bad condition. And this is the son of a uh, second grade teacher here in Puxico. I want to remember his mother, Cheryl, and uh, his uh, family as well today as they're going through this situation together. Um, Roxanne Carson's needing prayers. She has recurring brain lesions. Shirley Strider's brother-in-law in the ICU with blood clots near his heart, uh, also affecting his kidneys. And there's also need in that family for salvation. Uh, Jamie Dixon has end-stage cancer and is in need of salvation. Uh, others who are battling cancer, my cousin Pam Bunch, her father-in-law uh, is battling cancer. Brother Steve Williford her, has early-stage prostate cancer. Michael Bolin and Delbert Bryant both are struggling with stage 4 lung cancer. Diane Escher and Caden uh, these and um, Laura Lay all battling today, the first two there with uh, cancer and Laura Lay with leukemia, only two years old. Let's remember uh, Brenda Frazier. This is Brother Arnold's mother. She has stage four kidney failure. Uh, Louise Horn has a blood disorder and needs prayer today. James Pearson, high blood pressure. Uh, Nick Searcy and Brandy Bryant. We're believing for recovery for them from stroke. Uh, Gerald Yealy, we're, we're continuing to pray for him uh, as he's going through the ups and downs of recovery after a traumatic uh, brain surgery. Uh, my father and my mother-in-law both need healing of Parkinson's today. And then we have uh, several COVID cases that we're praying for. Uh, we want to continue to remember Pastor Gary Ratliff's daughter uh, in, in, in uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, missionary Judy McCarthy's mother, father, and sister all are battling the virus. Um, Reverend Eli Hernandez, the last update I had on him uh, as of last night, the doctor reported that he's still in the same place he's been all week, and that is on a ventilator, stable and sedated, while the doctors are waiting for his lungs to heal. But that's a vastly better outlook than where we were uh, last week at this time as they had given him just 48 hours to live. Um, and then we saw a drastic turnaround. We give God praise for that. So let's continue to remember Bishop Hibbert, uh, James and Irma Campbell, and Jessica. And uh, if anyone has an update on them, uh, Karen Pratt, if you're watching today, if you have an update on James and Irma, please share that with us. And uh, Carmen, if you have an update on Jessica, um, let us know what you know, and we appreciate that. We appreciate each and every one of you joining together with us today in prayer, and uh, we know that God is moving, and he's going to complete the work that he started in all of these needs today. When we um, closed out our devotion yesterday morning, we were talking about 
the scripture in Job 36 that gives us a picture of actually the water cycle. Uh, and we're talking about changing the atmosphere around us through prayer. What we can do when we're in a bad situation to begin to change the atmosphere and to experience a move of God in our situation. And Job said that God makes small the drops of water and they pour down rain according to the vapor thereof. And he said the clouds do drop that rain and distill upon man abundantly. And we talked about how that we are sending up vapor through our prayers and through our praise to God so that uh, so that means that we have the power to change the atmosphere wherever we are if we will stay committed to the process of prayer and worship. Now, there's one other variable in this whole weather scenario or analogy that determines when and where it rains, and it's something that we take for granted. It doesn't even get an honorable mention in our discussion of the water cycle. But that other element is the wind. And we take the wind for granted, both physically and spiritually. We assume that it's just something that happens to be there, but that is not true at all. Uh, do you know what actually causes the wind to blow? If you don't know that, don't feel bad. I didn't either, so I had to look it up, and I had to study it out. And I found out that the answer is actually quite simple. What causes the wind to blow is simply changes in the atmosphere. When some air becomes hotter than the air around it, it rises, leaving a void. Cooler air then quickly flows into the void, but by doing so creates yet another void, which more hot air then rises to fill. And this creates circulation and it is that circulation of air that creates the effect of wind. The more air that is displaced, the greater the circulation, and the stronger the wind becomes. In the physical realm, we have described the causes of wind as atmospheric changes. Hot air versus cold air, cold air and uh, circulation. In the spiritual realm, we can just call this, to make it simple, we can call this exercising our faith. The air particles in the natural realm that are the actual substance of wind are invisible. Likewise, the substance of spiritual wind cannot be seen or comprehended through the faculties of the flesh. But Hebrews 11 and 1 tells us, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So if we want to cause the wind to blow, if we want the rain to be brought to us, or if we desire for the wind to begin to blow harder, then we have to begin to exercise our faith. The more we exercise our faith, the more effort we put forth to change uh, the atmosphere, the greater the wind of God's Spirit begins to blow upon us and upon others in our lives that we are praying for. Now, how do we exercise our faith? Jesus said in Mark eleven twenty four. 24, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. So we circle right back to this whole idea of the necessity of what we're doing today, being faithful in prayer. When we pray, we are exercising or we are demonstrating our faith. And when we keep praying, even when it appears that nothing about our situation has changed, we are demonstrating the strength of our faith. Just before Jesus ascended into heaven, um, he told his disciples to go tarry in Jerusalem. And he said these words, until ye be endued with power from on high. And so we find them at the beginning of Acts chapter 2. And we read that when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Now, we know that they were there for a period of seven to ten days. They weren't sitting around looking at the walls. They weren't complaining this was taking longer than they had expected. No, when those 120 disciples went into the upper room, they began to work on changing the atmosphere. And from what I can gather, they must have been having some kind of a prayer meeting 
Uh, they must have been seeking after the Lord because the Bible says they weren't just in one place, but they were with one accord. And it's when we pray together that we begin to come into unity and bring our minds into focus on the same spiritual goals. And the Bible says when they did that, amen, that suddenly uh, when they were with one accord in one place, that suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. James said, show me your faith without your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. And this is just the simple facts of the business. You won't pray if you don't have faith, and you won't stay committed to prayer if you do not have strong faith, and you won't receive the promises of God if you are not willing to commit yourself to God's process. But if we are committed to this process of prayer, and I thank God for each one, each one of you that are so faithful to join us either live uh, at 7.30 on every weekday, or you watch this video at some later point throughout the day and pray along with us. But it is that commitment to the process, even when we do not see immediate results, even when we come back day after day and we have this list here and we're reading some of the same names and praying for the same needs of many that we've been praying for for many, many days. We do not let that deter us because we do not see immediate results. But the faith that we have put in action through the work of prayer we understand that it is changing right now the atmosphere of our situation. It's causing the wind of God to begin to blow where others say it's impossible. For seven days, 120 people continued in committed, steadfast prayer until the promised power arrived. Seven times Elijah sent his servant to look for a change in the weather forecast. And we preached that like he said, go look. And each time he came back and said, nope, there's nothing. And Elijah said, go again. And this went on seven times. That's not the way that it actually happened. Elijah said, you just keep going until you can come back and give me the report that I need to hear. And I'm going to be right here praying until that change happens. Amen. I Elijah was saying, don't bother me with the bad news before I've had time to work on changing the atmosphere. Amen. The Bible says that after the seventh time, the servant returned with the evidence of an atmospheric change. He said, I see a little cloud arising out of the sea like unto a man's hand. And Elijah, who had persisted in committed, fervent, effectual prayer that entire time, he jumped to his feet and he said, that's all I got to know. You better tell Ahab to head for the house because if he doesn't, the storm is going to overtake him. Amen. And it wasn't just that little cloud that the, that the uh, storm came from. That was just the first evidence. The Bible says that meanwhile, it came to pass that meanwhile, that the heaven was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain. Maybe today all we see is just that first evidence, just that little cloud, or maybe we're still waiting to see it. But we're going to keep praying. We're going to keep believing. We're working on changing the atmosphere. And we're going to see the change happen that we need to see in these needs today. Amen. God's revival church was birthed through committed, persistent prayer. Israel's three-year drought was brought to an end by the persistent, committed prayer of Elijah. And I'm convinced that the answer to Puxico's spiritual drought, my community, the answer for your community, the answer for whatever needs are in your life today, amen, is for us to pray up a storm, for us to be faithful and committed until we see the work come to pass. Oh, hallelujah. I'm thankful today that I can go to the Lord in prayer. Won't you join me right now? And let's just begin to lift up the name of the Lord and take our needs to him. Heavenly Father, we trust you today. Oh, God, just because we haven't seen any evidence uh, in some of these needs, that does not change our minds because we understand our role today, that you desire for us to submit our petitions to you, that you desire for us to pray over those, and you desire for us to be consistent and to keep knocking and to keep believing and to keep asking, Lord, hallelujah, to be persistent and consistent in our prayer and that the atmosphere will change Hallelujah, and we will see those answers come to pass. And so we trust in you today, Lord, as a source of every good thing 
It all comes from you in whom there is no variableness or no shadow of turning. You are the only one who has limitless resources. We do not trust in the government today. We do not trust, Lord, in our own uh, ability to earn a living. But we trust in you, the one true and living God. Hallelujah. You are able to do all things. And we give you praise and we give you glory. You're able, Lord, to take every impossibility and make it possible. Hallelujah. When we speak in faith, uh, mountains have to move. And we give you thanks, God, for the power that you've given us through prayer and through the exercising of our faith in prayer this morning. And we pray over all of these needs, trusting you today, God, as we glorify your name and as we desire to see you lifted up and that all the earth would know that you are God. Hallelujah. We bring these needs to you today praying your will to be done. We pray especially, Lord, for the spiritual needs of God that are in our lives today, for our family members that are away from you, our family members perhaps that are struggling in their faith today, God, and we pray for a great move in their life. Lord, we pray that the atmosphere will begin to change in our families right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray for Terry Mizell's boys today. You see Terry, Jean, and Michael, Lord, they've both had such a great experience with you in the past. And Lord, that's still there somewhere deep in their hearts. And we're believing, God, that you're drawing them back even now by your Holy Spirit. We pray for Pam's children today, God, for Randy and for Bobby and for Jenny and for Joe. In Jesus' name, Lord, we claim their souls, Lord, for the glory of your kingdom today. Hallelujah. For your name's sake, Lord. Hallelujah. Move in their lives today. We pray for Marcia's sons, for Josh and for Zach right now, God. Lord, they likewise, uh, they know you, God. They've experienced your power in their lives. And we believe you, God, just to draw them back to where they need to be. We pray for Frank this morning, Lord, and for Amber. We believe you for deliverance in their lives today, God. We pray for Sarah Mercer's sons today, Lord, that you would move in their lives. We pray for Carmen's daughter today, God, Lord, that your spiritual work that's going on in her life, Lord, would come to fruition. Hallelujah. Strengthen her today spiritually. God, strengthen her mind today. Encourage her today. Lord, let her grasp a fresh hope today in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, for Tasha's sister, Lord, for her husband today, that they would come back to you. We pray for Brenda's family, Lord, for salvation in every family member, in every home. Hallelujah, that a great work would be done in their lives. We pray for Debbie's daughters today, God. Lord, that you would move in their lives and their relationship with one another and with you. In Jesus' name, we thank you, God, for moving in the lives of all these people. God, we pray for Jamie Dixon, Lord, who has that physical need of, of end-stage cancer. But more importantly, Lord, God, he needs to be drawn back uh, to you, Lord. We pray you would deal with his heart today and minister, God, that he, Lord, would be able to live for you, God. And whether he experiences physical healing or not, God, we know that the most important part of this uh, is our spiritual well-being. In Jesus' name, move in his life right now. God, we bring every job situation to you. And these that we're mentioning right now are just representative of so many who have been laid off from their jobs. Millions of Americans today, Lord, that are, are, with, that are not able to work. And in other countries, the situation is dire as well, God. But we believe you, Lord, and as we pray for these, we believe you're going to move in needs all around the world with people that have similar situations because you are no respecter of persons. And so we pray for Elizabeth today, God. You have a miracle for her in her job situation. We pray for Jonathan, Lord, that he would be able to go back to work. God, we pray for Mark and Jenny today, Lord, that you would guide them, that you would lead them as they make decisions that are relative to their job situation. And Lord, to their business today, in Jesus' name. We thank you, God, for moving in our economic needs, Lord. Hallelujah, in our financial situations today. We believe, Lord, for you to move in, in our economy, that there would be a full recovery today, in Jesus' name. And Lord, now we pray for Michaela and Matt today. 
Oh, God, you see, Lord, the loss that they've experienced and the brokenness of their hearts. And we thank you, Lord, for healing their hearts today. Lord, you bind up the brokenhearted. Hallelujah. You care about what we're going through. And you never turn away someone that has a broken and contract spirit. And we thank you, Lord, for touching Michaela today, for making her whole. And, God, we pray today, Lord, that she would have a healthy, successful pregnancy, Lord, in the future as they try again, Lord, to bring a child into this world. We pray your blessing and your favor and your protection upon her womb. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. We pray for Mike Hodges' father-in-law today. Lord, we pray for Roy right now. Lord, whatever his health issue is, we entrust it to you, and we believe you for your touch today. In Jesus' name, we pray for Tracy right now. Lord, struggling with a relapse today of MS, possibly. Lord, for the pain that's in her arm today, we rebuke that pain in the name of Jesus. Uh, hallelujah. Be healed right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we pray for evangelist Doug Kleindis wife today as she goes through surgery. Lord, guide the doctors today. Guide the surgeons today. And we believe you for a great result, even as we already had a report from uh, from Dylan's surgery yesterday. We thank you, God, for your mighty hand. We pray for my Aunt Evelyn today, Lord. We bind together in unity and one accord, believing, Lord, for healing of her stomach right now. In Jesus' name, we lift up Adam Lane and his family, Lord, his mother Cheryl, God, his wife and his children today, Lord. Oh, God, we rebuke that C. diff infection in his body. Hallelujah. We believe, Lord, for him to be able to come off of dialysis, for his kidneys to function properly, Lord. Hallelujah. For him to be taken off of that respirator. Hallelujah. And to be completely healed for your glory. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we pray for Roxanne Carson, Lord. We believe you, God, for complete healing of brain lesions today. We pray for Shirley's brother-in-law right now, Lord, that those blood clots that are so near to his heart would dissolve and be harmless in Jesus' name. Lord, touch his kidneys right now. And Lord, move in his, in his spiritual needs today, Lord. Hallelujah. We pray for salvation in that family today in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we pray, Lord, for all these that are battling cancer. Jamie Dixon, Brother Williford today, Lord. Michael Bolin and Delbert Bryant and, and Diane Escher, Lord. We pray for Caden. We pray for Lorelei today, God. We believe you in Jesus' name, Lord, for healing of all types of cancer and of leukemia and every blood disorder. We bring Louise Horn to you today again, God. Believe you for healing of that blood disorder in her body. In Jesus' name, we rebuke diabetes in Jesus' name. We rebuke kidney failure in Jesus' name. And we believe you for Brenda Fraser's healing right now. Hallelujah from kidney failure. We pray for James Pearson, Lord, for healing of high blood pressure. Oh, I feel faith rising in this place today. Come on, children of God. Let's exercise our faith. Call upon the name of the Lord. Pray in tongues if you feel to do so. Let the Spirit intercede through you right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we believe for a wave of healing. We do not believe and accept a, a second wave of coronavirus, Lord, but we believe for a wave of the healing power of your presence, Lord, of your virtue to flow, because right now, Someone has just touched the hem of your garment. And we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we thank you. We thank you for Gerald's healing right now. We thank you for Nick and Brandy's healing right now. We thank you for healing from COVID-19, Lord. For Pastor Gary Ratliff's daughter, for her family, for missionary Judy McCarthy's mother and father and sister. We believe for complete restoration. For Reverend Eli Hernandez, we believe, God, that you're going to raise him up uh, even now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we pray for Bishop Hibbert, for James and Irma, and for Jessica, and we believe you for full recovery today, that their lungs would not be destroyed, that there would be no disability from this. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we pray for every unspoken need, Lord, for Josephine and for Susan and for Angela and for Jamie Cooper today, God. 
We believe you to move in all of these needs. And we give you thanks. And we give you praise. Hallelujah. Help me right now. Let's just celebrate the move of God that we're experiencing. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your mighty touch today. Thank you for every stripe you took for our healing. Thank you for nailing these things to your cross. Hallelujah. We thank you, God. We thank you for deliverance. We thank you for healing. We thank you for salvation. This is your kingdom. It's your power. It's your glory. It all belongs to you, and we belong to you today. And we give you thanks for all things. Hallelujah. And everyone said in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you this morning. What a powerful moment that we've shared together in prayer. Amen. Please do share this video and make it available to as many others as possible that they might pray along with us. Amen. I, I noticed that some even come back and go and watch the earlier videos and they pray along with those later on throughout the weekend. Amen. So let's do that. I want to uh, uh, make sure everyone remembers that we're going back to church services, at least here in Puxico, uh, Greater Vision, on this Sunday, 1030 a.m. I look forward to seeing you there. I pray for the rest of you that your services will be blessed this weekend as you're able to gather back together. And for those of you perhaps that are watching and you're not able yet to go back into service, uh, we're praying for you as well. Amen. Uh, that your online services will be blessed and however that you're able to gather, that God's blessing and favor would be upon your meetings. Amen. Until we see you again on, in Monday morning, the blessings of God be upon you in Jesus' name. Amen.